Hello everyone, today we're gonna be doing a VOD review of Anna, actually, if you didn't already know by the title, because the title literally said VOD review, anyway, uh, yeah, so our hero today is Acrylic, or Acrylic, however you want to pronounce it, I guess. He is a gold Ana main slash support main. And oh wow, he's showing off his stats. Very, very nice. Let's see what stats he brings to the table. He's circling his rank. I I assume he's trying to show off or something. Now let's. Oh, he actually uh, clicks on his Ana stats. So he's boasting that 19 hours played. So he's a seasoned Ana veteran. He even has a uh, the icon of Ana. The Shrike icon. I thought it was an Omnic icon, but apparently it is Shrike. The Shrike skin. And he's rocking that 47% win rate. Just like my my uh, my GP. I mean, uh, 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 very nice stats, very nice stats. 0 0.06 melee final blows. Very nice, good accuracy, decent accuracy. And here we go, right into the match. First thing, first problem, there's a very big problem. What? What is this team? So we have five backline heroes. Ana, Roadhog. He, Roadhog is backline. Despite being a tank, he's very squishy. His head hitbox is one of the biggest head hitboxes in the game. Not to mention his body hitbox, which is insanely big. Soldier backline, Pharaoh backline, or, as, or I guess you could say... Uh, up line because she's up in the air. Hanzo is a back line as well and it's not looking too good. You have no front line to really give space for your back line heroes and there's also no second support. If Fishy... Fishy? I think Fishy. Let's just call him Fishy. If Fishy decides to pick a second support you will have no front line. If he decides to pick a front line tank you will have no second support. So this team comp isn't looking very good, and as you, will, I've watched this VOD like two times beforehand just to prepare myself. I already drank bleach the other day, so I'm kind of. I should be mentally prepared. Our hero calls out the two tanks. Good call. Calls the solo heal actually. Actually, a good call because if we had two healers, we would have no front line. And if you had a frontline, you had no healers. But having a frontline is better than two healers and no frontline. This, this team comp is kind of eh. Right on. Very nice. Now, D.Va, not the best of picks, but definitely not the worst of picks. D.Va is a frontline tank. She has that defense matrix to soak up a lot of damage. A Rhine or even, even Winston. Even Winston would have been... Maybe a better pick. Now as you can see, our hero knows the position. The high ground, very valuable. Do not give up the high ground. High ground is insanely good in Overwatch. Now let's see where he goes. Yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Very nice. He takes this, he take this uh, window area, I guess, for Ana. This is probably the best spot for Ana on Volskaya point A. For the first phase of the point, at least. So you have a nice sight line of the enemy. You have a nice sight line of your team. You can even see in that back room to see if anyone's flanking. And you can even see through that little door thing. See if you can get a money nade or something while they're rotating through there. And Hanzo does get a nice pick on the Orisa. And Farah gets a nice pick on the Lucio. So everything's looking good so far. But wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up. Two problems here. The first one I'd like to address is I've never seen you press tab and look at the enemy team this uh, since the start of the round. After 10 seconds after the round starts, the enemy team comp is then revealed to you. So if you press tab, you can see the enemy team comp. And this is very important, especially as Ana, because you need to know what you're up against. If they have Winston, Genji, Tracer, you need to know to stay like really far back and not do anything aggressive, basically. But if they don't have an aggressive team, then you can play a little bit more aggressively. 
and be a little bit, you can afford to be a little bit out of position. And you jumped down onto the point when there was only one person contesting it. I mean, although you had good reactions to stop whoever is contesting the point, contesting the point is not, is not your job. Your job is to stay far back in a safe position and shoot your team and the enemy team. Do not, do not give up your position. This will be a recurring problem throughout this match, as you will see. So the enemy was actually a tracer. If you had looked up the scoreboard earlier in the match, you would have known their only mobile hero was tracer, and that you had a diva as well. Diva actually dashed over the roof to assist Hanzo. And as you will see, yep, diva dashes over the roof. There's really no need to help. This is just a solo tracer, and Hanzo Diva is more than enough to take care of that. Anna is not a mobile hero, so don't try to force her to be mobile. She's an old lady after all. Okay, so you see Roadhog sleeping on the ground. Now since I'm a- oh, I- spoilers. Okay, since I'm a Rhine main, I kind of expected Reinhardt to charge Roadhog into the bus, or this wall here. But you should have landed this clutch sleep dart. However, I wouldn't have expected you to because as we saw from the beginning, we saw our hero's statistics. He doesn't have too many hours in comp and thus has not experienced these situations that much. And these just come from, you just need a lot of practice to hit these clutch sleep darts. And like, if you see a scenario, it's like, oh, I've seen this scenario. like. Multiple times before. I know Reinhardt's gonna charge. I know Genji's gonna use Dragon Blade. I know Winston's gonna jump on me now. So you just take in past information and use it to make decisions on what's currently happen happening. But I wouldn't worry about it too much now. You'll get better at these with experience, really. So just try to remember, I guess. I guess a good, uh, a good start would be if you see something moving fast, just press shift, just press shift, just like slap it and try to aim it. Just reflex it. And it's a fair duel, good heals, good- oh my goodness, very nice. That was pretty pog champ. Oh my goodness, holy crap. I've already seen this VOD like three times, so I'm not really pog champing now. But I was pog champing the first time I saw it, believe me. Now Diva is very out of position, kind of 1v6ing, not paying attention to her backline. She goes in anyways when she's really low. Nothing you can really do about that. You can either you have two choices. You could either just go and try to save her, or just kind of let her die because you don't want to die. You have to make the call. Since your team picked up two kills, actually, you could the call the. We'll just see. Yeah, you went really aggressive here, but I think that was that was probably the right call there. And now I would go back up to the high ground since you have like two picks, three picks. So just make if you're if you have a gap, if you see a window, just go back up to the high ground because it's so important in this map. It's so important. And since they have a Winston, that's a Winston shield. Or is that no? no, no that's a Winston. That's a Winston. Yeah, since they have a Winston shield, high ground is even more important. Let me just draw a diagram. So there, okay, this is... This... This yellow box is this building. Uh, if I can use my mouse... Yeah, this building. So their team is over here. One, two, three, five, six, somewhere, somewhere in there. And then Diva's over here. Uh, I was gonna say D. <laughs> Diva's over here, and then you're here, A for Anna. Then some people are here. So you should you should not go in this direction. You should probably have stayed over here or went back into the giant health pack room. But we're gonna see what course of action our hero decides to take. Actually goes over to the right side. Not exactly sure what was trying to be accomplished there, um, but it's fine, it's fine. In gold, 
in okay the lower ranks everyone makes so many mistakes that your your single mistake is not going to make too much of a difference because everyone on both teams is making equally if not more mistakes than you are and as you go up the ladder people make less and less mistakes and I think the high ground was the best call here but this spot where you're at now is not it's not too bad it's not too bad and not sure why you're retreating towards the point area nice sleep though so when you're playing if you want to play the low ground on this spot when you retreat you want to fall back that way or more commonly you want to fall back into the giant health pack room you do not absolutely not want to go this way that's a big no 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 do not because the entire enemy team is going to be there because it's a point and your job is not to contest and yeah you could there's a nice juicy health pack there and nice walls for cover but instead you're gonna get frontlined by Winston who's nano boosted and you're gonna die that's that's a big rip rip ripperoni and pepperoni and that's gonna be the first point diva wasted her bomb or her self-destruct for no reason and that's gonna be the first point Okay, nice crosshair positioning. Okay, okay. Aim problem. This so, when when you uh, sometimes when you uh, when you want to shoot someone, especially your teammates, you kind of just scope in really fast and shoot really fast, and hopefully your muscle memory takes over and you land the shot, thus missing the first shot. I understand, like, because it's a fast-paced game. And then you want to get in the healing as quickly and as efficient as possible. But if you end up missing the first shot because you're moving too fast or trying to scope and shoot too fast, you're going to end up wasting more time. So I think you just need to just scope and then move over to your target and then shoot. Just take a deep breath. Don't need to do all these insane flicks. Alright, uh, this, very nice, very nice. Scope didn't just do an insane flick, but kind of tracked the Pharah up. Very calm, very nice. This is what I like to see. If only it was done a little bit faster, but that just comes with practice. And when you reload, you don't always need to go behind cover. You don't really want to give up your line of sight. You can just kind of peek just kind of go half behind this cover, just kind of peek up and peek down while you reload. So you don't give up total line of sight. And result, Reinhardt just gets a free charge. You had your sleep. And yeah, it's just all about positioning. But then something, something, a little something happens. You jump down. Hmm. Here you didn't need to jump down. You landed the sleep on Ryan from the high ground. So there wasn't a reason to follow up with the jump down after that. You weren't being attacked by a flanker, and you are in a decent position. In your next games, try to not touch the point at all. You try to stay completely away from the point, not even touch it. And I think this will help train you so you don't always just panic jump off of the high ground. And then remember, you're, you are the number one or number two priority that the enemy team wants to kill. You are on like number one hit list for the enemy team. They want to kill you, like number one, just want you dead first. And if you're on the point, that makes it so much easier for them. Nice split of damage and healing there. And you didn't need to jump off again. You're very squishy. Well, I do, I do understand the thought process of wanting to contest and stall points but since you're so squishy you die in like two seconds max actually two seconds is a long time I'd say less than one second average you're much more effective at healing your teammates as they are the ones doing the stalling and contesting so in this scenario you might have died anyways but maybe you could have prevented your death 
by just going that way or retreating backwards and waiting for someone else to get on the point. And because you jumped off, you died to a soldier alt. It's uh, it's it's hard though. Like you're still healing. There's a lot of pressure for sure. Yeah, it's hard. But try to stay calm and try to rationalize every decision that you make. That's basically the theme. The theme of this match is well, if you haven't noticed already, it is don't panic, stay calm, and just try to remember positioning. Okay, now, positioning, positioning. There's no need to give up a good, safe position and expose yourself to the entire enemy team. I know your team was here clogging up the choke, but then they moved over this way and are now here. And as they move, as your team moves, you have to adjust to their position. So you should have just went back behind the wall where you're perfectly safe. The rest of the match was just basically a huge trickle fest where our hero's team just kept trickling one by one. Roadhog kept trying to do some weird flanks. Steve tried to contest the point 1v5. And it's just all a big mess. So, the main point from this VOD, the main theme, I guess, is to just stay calm. It's, this is like a recurring theme in pretty much all lower ELO matches. And even, even like quote unquote higher ELO matches too. If you watch uh, a certain uh, educational YouTuber, you would have seen this, uh, this same theme being showed a lot. Because it is, it is really true. It's true in like pretty much every match in these lower brackets. So just remember, just take a deep breath and then take in your surroundings and make decisions according to what you observe. That is it, thank you for watching, I hope you learned a thing or two from this video, and have a good day, or night, or morning, or perhaps, never mind. Now it's time for an owl vision, that's totally not a ripoff of War Owl.